بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أيها الأحبة في الله some practical advice for the youth of Ahl Sunnah is first and foremost fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم وَتَقُوا اللَّهَ حَقُّ تَقَاتِهِ وَلَا تُمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and fear Allah as to the fullest way in which to fear him and don't die except in a state of Islam of being a Muslim so having taqwa Allah this is one of the first advices that I can offer and taqwa Allah this means to as the Salaf used to say to avoid the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enjoin or doing and fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders in the Quran to be just to be kind to one's parents to be to not kill people to seek knowledge to love Allah to be patient all of those characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to possess our acts of worship and they are things we should strive to do and they are part of taqwa Allah to fulfill those commandments and avoid the prohibitions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from the second piece of advice I'd like to offer is talab al-ilm seek knowledge seek knowledge ahabati fillah as our Shaykh Shaykh Mukbil bin Adi al Wadi, Allah Yarhamahu, told us to do when we were in the village, and he said to learn the Quran, to learn from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also to learn from the Arabic language that which will allow for you to have strong access to the Quran and to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said learn what you can from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well and he said avoid kathra taqil wa qal you know getting into debates and arguments and into issues which are way uh, beyond your means to speak about and just backbiting and slandering carrying tales you know we heard so and so said this we heard so and so said that so and so is this so and so is that so to avoid that as much as possible to avoid getting in those issues and the major scholars have spoken about this and before them those who are even greater than them in status and ilm like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and, and the Salaf of this Ummah have spoken extensively and more importantly than that is from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to avoid backbiting, to avoid slandering and you know that you would hate to eat the flesh of your brother uh, of your dead brother as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Hujurat and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that one of the, the people who will be punished in the grave one of the sins that will cause a, people, uh, a person to be punished is by uh, by slandering or by namima, by carrying tales about people in order to spread wickedness throughout the community. So these kind of things are all things which are prohibited in Islam, Muharram, will only hurt you in this life as well as the hereafter, and they will take you away from seeking knowledge and will harm your seeking knowledge so avoid it as the Prophet said مَرَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى قَبْرَيْنَ فَقَالْ إِنَّهُمْ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ وَمَا يَعَذِّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ أَمَّا أَهْرَهُمَا فَلَا يَسْتَتَرُ مِنَ الْبَوْءِ وَأَمَّا الْآخِرُ فَيْكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالنَّمِيمَةِ the Prophet walked by two graves and the people were being punished in the graves and of course no one would know that except for the Prophet through wahi, through revelation. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Verily, they are being punished, and they're not being punished 
for something which the people think is great, you know, something that the people think uh, take lightly. As for one of them, he used to not correctly clean himself from his urine, you know, make, making proper istinja or cleaning their garments to make sure that urine didn't splash on their garments, ikramakum Allah. And as for the second one, and as for the second one, they used to carry tales, spread tales throughout the community in order to spread wickedness. So avoid those characteristics. Another very important aspect of that is, as we mentioned, learning the Arabic, uh, the Arabic language. And learning the Arabic language, Ahabatifillah, the one of the best things that I've found for myself and in witnessing many people who studied the Arabic language is being consistent and even talking to Mashaikh who've mentioned their particular tales, uh, their stories about uh, seeking knowledge and how they were with their colleagues. For example, uh, Abu Salah al Afghani was uh, one of the Mashaikh, I think he's in Kuwait now, or he's in the UAE teaching at a university, but he used to be in Medina. And he mentioned in a sitting, I recall, he said that, that uh, you know, some of his colleagues now call him from Kuwait you know, for fatwa or for advice and for uh, about issues in the Sharia. And they used to study alongside him and be his colleagues. And the biggest, uh, their biggest issue was the inkita, that they stopped seeking knowledge for whatever reason, something in the dunya uh, took them away from their seeking of knowledge. And I remember Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh Abdullah al-Mar'i al-Adani, Hafidullah Ta'ala, one of our mashayikh in Yemen, and we had a sitting with him and we asked him about, to give us advice about Talib al-Ilm and so forth. And this was one of the things he mentioned. He also mentioned, he mentioned a person that when he was in Damaj, he said that there was a brother there who used to memorize, I think he said 50 hadith a day. And we can't even imagine having that qudra. But some people, Allah has favored with that. And that's what he was mentioning. He was mentioning this man you used to memor memorize 50 hadith a day. And it wasn't probably just the metan. He probably memorized the metan, meaning the text, and the synod, the isnad, the chain of uh, narrators. And this shows you, you know, and I've seen personally, especially in Yemen, I've seen this, especially in Damaj, in those places, people who have this ability, Allah favored to be able to memorize the chain of narrators, you know, and who would go around literally and just ask you what you know, just to test you and to keep their memorization strong. They'd say, you know, tell me a hadith. Or they would say something like this, and they they had hadith, kathra, you know, many hadith on cap, you know, Mashaikh memorizing Bukhari and Muslim and so forth with the Isnad. I think Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz al Burri, uh, al Burri, and, and others have this Allah's favored with this ability and the point being a Allah is not to stop and he said so the Sheikh was mentioning about this individual who memorized these hadith but yet he stopped seeking knowledge you know going due to work and this and that and the other or what have you and getting caught up kind of in the worldly life and these things took him away from Talib al -ilm, and he uh, you know forgot much of what he learned and so the importance is, is being consistent. And I've seen that in my own life, especially with the Arabic studies. I've studied Arabic for so many years, in fact. And my Arabic is still not that great as far as speaking and, you know, many grammar books I've studied. But then I have to restudy and restudy. And this comes from lack of memorization. For one, you should try to memorize what you can. And number two... Uh, Finish, you know, if you're studying the Medina books, finish the whole course. If you're studying uh, Arabi Bain al uh then, 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 uh, then finish the, the course or whatever book series that you're doing. Try your best to sit with someone and continue so that way you finish and try to memorize. And you always have to make muraja. Elm, yahtaj muraja. That elm, no matter what, you know. You've memorized this, you've memorized the Surah Talati, you've memorized whatever. You have to make maraja. You have to go back over those hadith or you will forget.
And that's just the way Elm is. Elm, it comes, it, it can come difficult uh, with difficulty and it leaves with ease. And there's so many uh, athar of the salaf that mention that. And so, ahabtifillah, be consistent in your studies and try to get on a program. Uh, the best, obviously, is if you can go to a Muslim land, especially an Arab country, to where you can immerse yourself in the language. But if you're unable to do that, then try to be in a consistent program in the masjid or something low in your local community or online if there's a program for you, whatever, but be consistent. Don't stop. Do whatever it takes, even if it requires, and we were just talking about that yesterday uh, from the life of Sheikh Muqbil, Allah Yarhamahu, how he lived and how he loved Elm so much that he used to study in Dara Hadith in the morning. He would uh, work whatever he could in the afternoon and then at night he would sit with the ulama. So this is this is really what it takes to be to reach uh, you know a high level of knowledge, even to be a strong student of knowledge. It takes sacrifice. You don't get there those those students of knowledge that Allah has favored to really have Elm, they didn't get there they didn't receive a revelation. They got there from 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 striving and sacrifice in their time while other people were playing football and playing this and doing this. They were probably in the masjid memorizing. You know, even to the extent I would say many ulama, you see that they have harms in their body because they don't do any exercise, they don't do, you know, they focus so much on the ilm. And so, ilm yahtaj tab, as the Sheikh Muqbal used to say, and it comes from an athar in the, uh, uh, the Salaf, al ilm, lam yat bi rahat jizid, wa yati bi, lam yati bi rahat jizid. That knowledge does not come by having comfort in your body, basically, by being comfortable. So these are just some advices. Also, avoid groups and sects. Grow, avoid, this is probably the last piece of advice I'll say, is to avoid sectarianism, avoid hizbiya. Don't join groups. If someone says you have to take the bayah to this imam or this leader or this Sufi marid or whatever, avoid that. Because Islam doesn't call, call you to that. The, the, the bay'ah will be to the imam of the Muslims. So if we had a real legitimate khalifa that the Muslims were in agreement upon, then, then that would be the imam for us. But since we don't, especially living in the West, unfortunately, we don't have much leadership at all. But in your perspective communities, you know, listen to your imams and benefit from them but do not take bay'ah to them. And also, this is in accordance with the sunnah and the advice of the Prophet ﷺ, that when you see these many differences, which you, you see now and you will see, you're going to have people who are convincing you that you should be fighting in Iraq, or that you should be in Syria, or you should be in Nigeria helping Boko, or you should be wherever. That this, these kind of things are just distractions and confusion for many of our youth. So avoid that. Focus on seeking your knowledge. Because even if you wanted to fight jihad, you have to have knowledge to do so. You have to have ilm to know what is jihad. What is the ahkam of jihad? What is, how, what is the justice of jihad? You need to know these things. And that can only come through knowledge. So seek knowledge, ahabit fillah, and avoid groups and sects. And the Prophet sallallahu said, If tarakat al-Yahud ala itta wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al-Nasara ala itta natain wa sab'in firqa, wa sataftariku hadhi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kulla hatha fil nar ala wahida, kulla man hiya ya Rasulullah. Qala man kana ala mithli ma kana alayhi wa sahabi. The Prophet sallallahu said, The Jews broke into 71 sects, the Christians into 72 sects, my nation into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. He said, Who are they, ya Rasulullah? Uh, he said, those who are upon my sunnah and that of my uh, companions. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al-Khulafa Rashidin al-Mahdiin Adaw alayha bi nawadij wa iyaakum al-Mahdatan al-Mur Fanna kulla bid'atin dalala The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, whoever lives after me shall, shall see many differences. So it's upon you my sunnah. And the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat meaning Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anu majma'in their sunnah follow their way and those things they agreed upon in fiqh and in aqidah and minhaj they were in agreement so in aqidah and minhaj you don't have to worry you can follow the sunnah of any of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
And this is my general advice, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bat, with tawfiq, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.